All those Steve White Trekway 89 for Steve Outs 89. Well, shockwaves are rippling through the Star Trek community at the news that Netflix is dropping Star Trek. Oh my god. Um, people are not happy. Um, now, it's not all Star Trek shows. It's uh, three Star Trek shows. And this is hot on the heels of an even more um, baffling situation with Paramount Plus with Star Trek films. Now, I guess I'll get into that first because I think that's actually more interesting. I had heard something about this and I wasn't paying attention because, you know, pandemic problems. Um, basically, they didn't... Okay, they had the first 10 Star Trek films on Paramount Plus, which is supposed to be the home of Star Trek. Um, home to all your Star Trek needs from classics such as the original series and Next Generation to current hits like Discovering Picard. Um, yeah, so I just assumed they were just collecting them up from different places that they had, you know, contracts with and they were eventually just going to be home there. And then they added um, Star Trek Beyond and I'm like, okay, so they've got the 10 films and then the JJ film, one of them. So that's out of all 13 films, that's 11. They're getting there. Then they added Into Darkness, which is I could have missed. Um, I like the first film. I like Beyond, except for the start. But, um, yeah, so they were getting there. They're almost there. And then they turn around and boom. They're all, they, they, they get rid of everything. All six original films, all four next-gen films, and all they've got is the two second and third JJ films. Not the first film, not the first two films, but the, the second two. And Generations apparently isn't even showing anywhere. Um, that's kind of the most surprising thing. Generations isn't streaming anywhere. Um, the first nine of the ten films are showing on AMC and AMC streaming service, which I don't know what that is. I'm in Australia, so I don't know. Um, so, yeah, so you can see the first nine of the ten Star Trek films, which makes no sense. Why would they leave off Generations? I kind of understand leaving off Nemesis because it's the last one. It's the least successful commercially. It's, like, on the end of, like, the list, but Generations, it's, it has both original and next-gen cast. I can't see you really removing it from, in any way from, like, the marathon. Um, it doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, when, will they add the, the original, um, the first JJ film to Paramount Plus? I mean, where is that? Is that streaming anywhere? They don't say anything about where that's streaming. I wasn't able to find that. So that's a mess. I can't believe they let that happen. I mean, how did they? How did they? How 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 did they lose them? How did they not have them guaranteed? How did they not get them home? How did they not keep them? I do, I don't understand that. No one can explain that to me. I haven't been able to find that anywhere. Just that it's been stated that it's happened. Now, as so far as Netflix, Netflix is losing Star Trek, Star Trek Enterprise, uh, Star Trek Voyager, and apparently leaving the other Star Treks, which also doesn't make sense. So you basically have Next Generation and Deep Space Nine, which is not my favourite Star Trek. It's it's out of the original canon Star Trek shows. It's my least favourite. It's kind of like Discovery on a space station. <laughs> it's, yeah. So you basically just have Next Gen. Uh, I think the animated series all, 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 um, all already left. I want to say almost. I think that already left. Um, I should have checked that, but I assumed it was still on there, but I think it already left, and they're just mentioning what did le leave. So, yeah, I, um, this is not surprising, though, because this is happening to, to Netflix every month. Every month, contracts run out, and instead of renewing them and keeping the shows or the movies on Netflix, you know, studios and um, TV stations or whatever, they're all pulling them all off, and they're all setting up their own streaming services using their content because um, Paramount, um, Warner Brothers, um, God, who else doing Disney? Everyone's doing them now. Uh, and sort of what the situation was before was Par not Paramount, I keep wanting to say Paramount, Netflix. <laughs> Netflix had everyone sh everybody shows, I can't talk, everybody shows on their streaming platform and then everyone would just go there and watch it and it was very easy everyone loved it people were sick of cable they got rid of their cables all great but now slowly all the shows are being stripped off netflix and netflix does have some original content but not a lot so if they lose all the content from the other studios they're going to struggle to to 
you know, stay relevant if all they have is their original content, they will be sort of reduced to like a little studio streamer, just like um, the ones that are sort of popping up now that are trying to be mainstream. And it's just, it's a bit of a mess because once upon a time, if you all remember, there was a thing called cable. And there, in America, there are a lot of cable companies and it was a huge hassle. You have to buy like five of them or ten of them or whatever to get all the shows you wanted. In Australia, we had a lot easier. We just had Foxtel. We had like one, um, one, one cable network, and then there was like the cheap version of it called Ostar, which was just in Tasmania and some places who couldn't get all, all of it. So it was pretty easy for us. We had to pay thirty dollars for it, but it was pretty easy. It was one-stop shopping. But now um, we're sort of being hit by the streamers as well because there's like a whole bunch of them now as well. So people are getting screwed over. The audience is being screwed over, left over. And it's, Center because you basically have to just pay for all of them. If you want all the shows, if you want to see everything that's on TV at the moment, you have to buy all of them. My thing that I do is once a month I get a different streamer. So I'll get Netflix and I'll just watch everything on that and then I'll get um, Disney, I'll watch everything on that and then I'll get um, Stan, watch everything on that. We've, we've got a whole bunch. I can't even, there's too many to even you know, remember what they are now on Paramount Plus. Um, and 10 plus and some of them are free so it's easy to catch up on some of the network tv stuff but the specifically streaming stuff i just do one a month and i just cycle through them so i am paying every month for a streaming service but i'm not paying for all of them and eventually i get around all the shows and i don't mind i don't watch like watching episodes like once a week like on cable anyway because you can just sort of save them up and stream them so i just wait and i just do a season and a go so i'll just do my favorite shows that month, basically catch up on them, and then go to the next one. So I find that's the best method, just for a hint for anyone who might care. Um, so yeah, this is just really weird. Now, see, I just also want to show people something which is, I think, I don't know, something remarkable to some people apparently. Um, in here I keep these strange little things called Blu-ray discs. Oh my god, I don't need to stream this. I own it. A lot of crap in there. Well, I mean, look, I got Star Trek, the second season, the third season. I can watch them whenever I damn well want. Buy Blu-rays and DVDs, people. My God. Um, yeah, I got the movies. I got these ones as well. <laughs> I got the Next Generation movies. Is actually all six um, individual. Um, releases in here, which, what were they again? See, I've got my Best of Both Worlds slip cover, which, while well, I'm showing people, because it's fairly cool. You open it up and you, you, go, you turn the cutest to John Luke. And then you got the different cover on the inside, da da da. And yeah, there's uh, the next level, which was the Encounter at Farpoint and two other random episodes. I really think they should have done one of the other two parters and had like a double feature this would have been i think a much better sale than just two random episodes and it would also sort of negate that other disc because they didn't do all of them as doubles but they, they did uh, the best of both worlds redemption unification chain of command and all good things and of course um encounter at five point on the um little tester sort of disc which they did start off before they did all the um releases of the remastered next gen so yeah, th this is this is your only real hope. Just buy the Blu-rays, put them in a tin, find some way to make them attractive on on your on your bookshelf, and just make peace of it. Because otherwise, you're going to be paying forever. Like every month, you're basically. I mean, you're buying a DVD every month, basically. So if you're only buying the, ch if you're only getting it for Star Trek. Just buy the Blu-rays, buy the DVDs, have them, and you never have to worry about anyone taking them again because. You know, you're sitting here just going along watching your Star Trek just casually and then boom, oh, it's gone. They changed the contract. Oh, now I don't have it anymore. No one can do that to me unless they come into my apartment and actually steal my stuff. So, yeah. Um, I'm shocked about the movie situation. I'm not surprised about Netflix. We knew it was going to happen. We knew Paramount Plus wanted everything, all the Star Trek over there, and we knew Netflix also wasn't happy with um, Discovery and all the contract drama back there and the budgeting drama and all that and all that and same with Amazon they had issues with Picard so you knew they were all eventually going to come back to Paramount Plus and they were going to use the streaming to actually pay for the show and keep it going so that's not a surprise we knew that was coming the movies shocks me the fact that 
I thought maybe they might take a while to get them back, but the fact they lost them again, I'd love, I'm going to have to look into this, I just want, I just need to know how that happened. Um, I'm really fascinated by that. But um, I'm going to go and put all my Blu-rays back where they were. I do have everything, it's just these are the easiest ones to grab. I've got um, everything on DVD that was released, every single show, and then I've got everything that was released on Blu-ray. And I do have some of the shows twice now, and when the new steelbooks come out of the original series, I'm going to buy them as well because I don't like these damn things. They're just too big and chunky, and they've got, they got no character. They're just the Delta. I want I want pictures. And the 60s style, like do that, you know. It's pretty, but um, I'm going to go. Feel free to share, like, comment, subscribe, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, buy the Blu-rays, people. Don't be slaves to, to the streamer, because it's never going to, it's, it's never going to care. It'll just take them whenever they want them.